Hi, I'm John Copeland and we're here at Fox Valley Cart Shop for the first of the 2021 series of seminars for Grand Prix teams. Each year we hold these seminars here at the shop and while we'd love to have you here with us, the current COVID-19 restrictions and the Protect Purdue plan make that impossible. So we hope you'll find these videos to be a useful alternative. In these next few videos, we'll try to shed some light on the different aspects of kart racing that can have a big impact on how successful and enjoyable your Grand Prix experience can be. We'll talk about the Yamaha engine and carburetor. We'll talk about the chassis and the drive system. And we'll look at the best approach to driving the Grand Prix track. But first of all, we're going to talk about clutches. Of all the elements of your Grand Prix cart, the clutch seems to be the one that gives most teams the biggest headaches year after year. But it doesn't have to be that way. So let's start with the basics. The function of the clutch, regardless of which one you use, is to transmit the maximum torque from the engine's crankshaft to the axle without bogging down the engine. If you've ever driven a car or a truck with a manual transmission and you tried to start off in some gear other than first gear, you know how it bogs the engine down and it's really hard to get going. Well, the same thing applies here. If the clutch engages too far below the torque peak of the engine, it just accelerates way too slow. This is a typical torque curve for the Yamaha engine. The blue line is torque and the red line is horsepower. As you probably know, horsepower is a number derived by multiplying torque times RPM and dividing by a constant. But what drives the cart is torque. And you can see on this dyno sheet that peak torque for the Yamaha engine in the configuration that you run it at Grand Prix is at about 10,500 RPM. The goal is to get the clutch to engage just below the torque peak, typically at about 10,200 or 10,300 RPM. That's what adjusting your clutch is all about. Engage too low and the engine will bog and accelerate too slowly. Engage too high and the clutch will get too hot and eventually fail. You all know the law of the conservation of energy. All the energy that your engine produces comes in the form of torque at the crankshaft. The clutch's job is to convert as much of that torque to torque to the axle as possible, and the rest is converted into heat. Regardless of what type of clutch you run, wet or dry, crankshaft mounted or on the jack shaft, the inside of the clutch spins as the engine spins. So the inside of the clutch is turning faster than the outside. Until the speed reaches the engagement point, that excess energy turns into heat. As the engine speed increases and the internal speed of the clutch increases, it begins to engage the outer part of the clutch, the clutch drum that's connected to the axle by the chain. As that engagement happens, the cart begins to accelerate. At some point, depending on how the clutch is adjusted, the inside of the clutch and the outside drum will be turning at the same speed. At that point, we refer to the clutch as being locked up. Once the clutch is locked up, it begins to lose heat to the passing airflow. The amount of time that the clutch is locked up has to be proportional to the amount of time the clutch is slipping, or it just gets hotter and hotter and hotter. That's why so many clutches are destroyed in residence hall and fraternity house parking lots. The cart never gets going fast enough for the clutch to lock up, and so the heat just builds up and up and up until the clutch fails. In a wet clutch, that means that the oil burns up and the discs are ruined. In a dry clutch, it just means that the discs glaze and they're still ruined. Either way, the clutch is rebuildable, but you're done for the day. These are the three most common types of clutches for the Yamaha engine. The Bully jack shaft dry clutch, the L&T engine mounted wet clutch, and the small diameter engine mounted dry clutch. This can be either a Horseman as, it, as this one is here, or a Patriot or a Tomar. Each has its own set of pluses and minuses, 
but they all operate using the same principle. As the inside of the clutch spins, centrifugal force from the weight levers increases as the RPM increases, and that force works to overcome the springs that hold the discs apart. As the discs squeeze together, they transfer torque to the drum and from there to the chain. Increasing the tension on the springs increases the RPM required for the weight levers to overcome that tension and squeeze the discs together. On the dry clutches, turning the screws on top of the springs clockwise increases the tension and so raises the speed at which the clutch engages. Turning them counterclockwise lowers the engagement speed. For the bully clutch, you'll use a nut driver with a 5 16 end. For the small diameter dry clutches, you'll use a hex key that's 1 8 of an inch. It's important to remember to always adjust each of the springs the same amount. So if you want to raise the clutch engagement by 100 RPM, turn each of the screws a quarter of a turn. You need to keep the pressure on the springs equal for it to work properly. So keep track of them as you go so you don't forget one or do one twice. If you think you've gotten them set unequally, you can always measure the height with a caliper and, and get them set back to the same height. Here's an important word of caution. Do not ever tighten the springs down until the coils touch. If you need to make sure the springs are all adjusted at the same height, measure with a caliper and get them even. If you tighten them down until they bottom out, that's called coil bind and it ruins the springs. Once you tighten down a coil spring until the coils touch, they will never behave properly again. If you don't have a caliper to measure spring heights, or if you're not confident doing it, just bring the clutch in and we'll do it for you. It'll only take a minute or so. Now these are both dry clutches. The bully jack shaft clutch and the small diameter engine mounted clutch. Because these clutches are mounted directly on the crankshaft, they don't have the gear reduction from the belt drive and so they turn a lot faster than the jack shaft clutch. But the operating principles are all the same. As the engine spins the inside of the clutch, centrifugal force from the lever weights squeezes the discs together and transfers torque from the engine to the drum, the chain, and finally the axle. This dry clutch mounts directly on the engine crankshaft. It was designed for lower horsepower setups like a Yamaha running a can muffler. Those engines make about 11 or 12 horsepower compared to the 16 or 17 that your Grand Prix engine makes using a tuned pipe exhaust. The, the advantage of these smaller clutches is they're lighter and they have less, less angular momentum. That means, that, that means quicker acceleration, but there's a downside. The smaller clutch means less surface area to absorb the heat. Remember these clutches were designed for lower horsepower engines that have a torque peak at a much lower RPM. You can make them work on a Yamaha with a pipe but you really need to engage them much lower if you expect them to survive. 9400 to 9500 RPM is about all they'll tolerate, and that's way below the torque peak of your engine. So, if you, so you give up significant performance. If you want to try one of these clutches, we'll be happy to help you make the necessary adjustments. Just ask. And that brings us back to the torque curve. We get asked, if the torque peak is at 10,500 RPM or 10,600, wouldn't it be better to slip the clutch at that point? The short answer is yes, it would be better if, if the clutch could handle the heat. But for the clutch to work reliably and for 160 laps, that's 1,600 turns. Or even for just a few laps in qualifying, you have to give the clutch enough time to cool down to shed the heat it generates from slipping off the corners. In the next video, we'll get into the l and wet clutch that's mounted on the engine. But right now, let's finish up with the bully dry clutch that's mounted on the jack shaft. As you can see, this is a pretty heavy-duty unit with six springs and four discs.
the bully clutch can either be mounted outboard facing the right side of the cart or if you slide the shaft over it can be mounted inboard behind the seat. Typically there is more room if you mount it outboard and it's easier to adjust because the adjusters are right here. The clutch is driven by the jack shaft which is driven by the belt from the engine and it's held in place by this little square key that goes in that slot and then by a bolt with a washer on the end. The clutch comes with correct springs and weights and should require just minor adjustments once it's on the cart. Now let's talk a little bit about maintenance. The ceramic discs in this clutch are quite durable and will last a long time, but they do eventually wear. The easiest way to measure wear in the clutch is with a feeler gauge. The air gap between the discs should be between 45 and 55 thousandths of an inch. If it gets to be bigger than that, it's probably time to replace the discs. We can do that for you here at the shop, and for Grand Prix teams, there's no cost for that service other than the cost of the parts. It's also a good idea to blow the dust out of the clutch every day with compressed air if you can do that. The clutch itself doesn't require any lubrication other than a little bit of grease on the bearing in the clutch drum, and we'll take care of that when we have the clutch apart. When you run the jack shaft clutch for the first time with new discs, it's a good idea to run three or four slow laps and then come in and let the clutch cool down. That gives a chance for everything to break in and seat in properly. You'll find that as the clutch gets hotter, it bites harder when it engages. Adjusting the clutch is not anything that you can do without running the engine. There is no magic spring height setting to get you to 10,200 or 10,300 RPM. You have to start the engine and test it. All you need to do is hold the brake, start the engine, and as soon as the engine cleans out, hold the throttle wide open while you read the tachometer. The RPM reading should stabilize within a second or two and you can let off the throttle. At this stage, all you want to do is get within a couple hundred RPM of where you want to be. Shut the engine off, make the necessary adjustments, try again. Don't forget that when you're holding the brake and throttle wide open, the clutch is getting hot. Two or three seconds is about all you need and the clutch won't overheat too quickly. Once you have the setting within range, head out on the track, check it there, come back in and adjust as needed. Well, that about does it for the bully clutch. In our next video, we'll talk about the, the L&T clutch. It's a little trickier to install and adjustments a little bit different, but we'll go over all that and get you ready to hit the track. In the meantime, don't forget to share this video with all your Grand Prix friends, like us on Facebook, and we'll see you next time.